Hello and welcome to my channel. Try This is a series breaking down a certain game or play style of a game. Today we're going to be talking Commander and bringing down the Archimandrite. If you enjoy this content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It really helps other viewers discover the content I produce and is a great way to show support. With that said, let's dive in. The Archimandrite is a 0-5 human advisor who costs 2 blue, red, white. They have at the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life, where X is the number of cards in your hand minus 4. Also, whenever you gain life, each advisor, artificer, or monk you control gains vigilance and gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the amount of life you've gained. You can tap 3 untapped advisors, artificers, and or monks you control to draw a card. I think this is a really interesting tribal commander. These creature types don't get a ton of support for their tribe, so I think the Archimandrite is welcome in the format. It's pretty cool because in theory you could build three separate lists for each tribe to mix things up with the commander. I'm going to focus on advisor in the video, but let me know in the comments if you tried the other two tribes. I'm curious to see how effective it was for them. It's always nice to have mana production, card advantage, or both in the command zone. It helps the deck perform more consistently when you have a utility function like this. We have access to white, so gaining life isn't too hard, letting us swing out with what we want and then tap them later for cards. I think this commander provides a good opportunity to build a petition or mill list. Our commander is also an advisor to fit either of their abilities also. We can pick and choose this way who we want to mill, or we can just draw cards. Since we have access to red and white also, there's other utility cards and advisors we could add to further the tribe and mill strategy. We only need to have one petitioner on the field to use the mill effect, so we don't really need to fully kit out our creature list with them. So since we're focusing on a Petitioner mill theme, it makes sense to add Bruvac. Bruvac is an advisor as well to fit both the abilities of our commander and the Petitioners. This way we can speed up our mill process and close up the games faster. He combos very well with Maddening Cacophony, which will mill our opponents out completely. It can be a pretty brutal combo to pull off. If your opponents don't have any Shuffle Titans, you can pretty much win right away with these two cards. We'll need card draw for our commander's first ability, so aside from running your typical cards like Esper Sentinel, we can run Court of Cunning and Curse of Verbosity to draw extra cards. The court fits our theme, and with our commander providing Vigilance, it should be pretty easy to protect Monarch. We're just vulnerable in the air at that point. He only gives us Vigilance when we gain life though, so cards like Venser's Journal, Fountain of Renewal, and Authority of the Consoles will help ensure we gain life before combat. There's a ton of ways to gain life, but we'd prefer to do so before combat so we can swing out and still get an opportunity to use the tap abilities later on. Drug Skull Reaver, True Conviction, and Kindred Discovery will provide a variety of utility for our deck, playing into either the draw or life gain themes. Having Life Link and Double Strike synergizes very well with our commander, as the first strike will buff our tribe for the second strike. Kindred Discovery will just draw us a ton of cards, as well as building up for our next upkeep trigger. We need more advisors to keep the mill going, so Reflections of Lajar is a great include, alongside some other great mill enchantments in Psychic Corrosion and Memory Erosion. The latter two enchantments are great mill staples. With all the draws we can get with our commander, Psychic Corrosion will turn that ability into a mill ability also. Mind Crank, Bite of Nathasa, and Reconnaissance are some great cards to synergize with combat. The Crank will mill our opponents whenever they lose life, and not just in combat. Bite will enable us to draw cards and force our opponents to attack, but there's two similar cards in Coastal Piracy and Reconnaissance Mission if you need similar abilities. Last up is Reconnaissance to protect our attacking creatures from unfavorable trades also. We can continue to protect our creatures in combat with cards like Aroas, Dolom Gate, and Ruin Tail. Ruin Tail's flip form protects from all damage in addition to combat. This way we can get some free swings out with our creatures. Your results may vary though, as the petitioners are only 1-3s, we won't be a big threat in combat anyway if we can't gain life before combat. To play into the tribe more, I'd recommend Michiko, Masako, and Herald's Horn. The Horn makes all of our petitioners cost just one blue mana and can give us some card advantage throughout the game. The two creatures both provide some good defensive utility. Masako lets us still tap our creatures, then block later on in case we have to respond to something. Michigo deters our opponents from swinging into us to begin with. They fit our tribe to work with either our commander's or the petitioner's abilities. Though they don't fit our tribe, Fleet Swallower, Manic Scribe, and Ruin Crab are some great mill creatures that fit the theme. You should focus on the tribe to get as many activations as possible, but these might be worth including in the list. An alternate win condition you could add for the list is Azor's Elocutors. They fit the tribe we're going for, and since we're a defensive deck, it's possible we could stall long enough to get the counters we need to win. It does take quite a while to win with this card, but it's an interesting alternate win condition we can use with the other activated abilities. To jam out all of our petitioners is Thrumming Stone. This card is normally useless in Commander, but it's really good with any card we can put multiple in the deck like petitioners. Basically, whenever we cast one, we might hit another one in the four cards on top of our deck. For every one we hit, we do it again. If we hit a couple, then we might pull every petitioner out of our library. Though this sounds very good, I don't normally recommend it. 
I think it often sets you up for failure if your opponents happen to have a board wipe. In a Petitioner or Shadowborn Apostle deck, it's generally okay because we don't care about summoning sickness with their abilities. Next up is Jeskai Ascendancy to keep untapping our creatures for value. It gives us a ton of value in draws also. It's an overall great card in the list if you run quite a few non-creature spells. My initial example list for this deck only had 30 creatures, including the commander, so there's plenty of spells I could cast to untap them with. It also makes a good combat trick as it anthems our creatures as well. Being a cast trigger, even if our opponents counter the spell we cast, we still get some value from it. Drum Bellower is basically Seedborn Muse for our creatures. This way we untap our creatures with our other opponents to get additional petition triggers or draws with our commander. It's a solid card to run in this list even though it doesn't fit the tribe. But we could solve that with cards like Maskwood Nexus which turns all of our non-tribal creatures into ones that fit our tribe. It can also make shapeshifters for us which we can use with the different abilities as well. It's a great overall card we can sink some extra mana into the advancer board state. I've been looking for a while for a commander to pilot a petitioner's deck, though Bruvac is also a great commander for it, it feels like it fits more with a hyper mill list than a tribal list. The Archimandrite is an interesting commander we can use with several different tribes and provides some expanded utility for a petitioner list with its draw ability. I think it's worth a try if you ever wanted to give them a shot. If you build around monks or artificers, again let me know in the comments how it went for you. If you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing to the channel. Comment below on cards you think synergize well with this commander, and if you have any suggestions for commanders to build in the future. Thank you so much for watching, good luck, and have fun.